Guys, this is a recap from last week's Go Groomer live from the grooming table. The topic is heated cage dryers in grooming facilities. I am certified pet professional Amy Lee. The only difference between you and your groomer is knowledge, technique, and tools. It is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the grooming industry. So stay put as we get started on this journey together today. Thank you guys for joining me live from the grooming table. It is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the grooming industry. And you know that. Tonight I have a script. Uh, not really a script. Notes. This subject is very huge. And it's a very big deal. And I want to do it right. I want to do it right for you guys. I want to do it right for pets. I want to do it right for groomers. And I want to do it right for pet owners. This one's going to be big. This is going to be a little tough to go through tonight. Some of the I've been waiting to throw this out there. And I've been waiting to share it with you guys. The time is now. We're just jumping right into a very heated subject, okay, guys? It literally is a heated subject. The subject is heated cage dryers that are used in grooming salons and the risks that are involved in doing so and using them. The risks to the pets, the risks to that cage dryers themselves bring upon professional groomers the risks that it brings upon them in their careers that's a big risk are cage dryers worth these risks what risks are we talking about here tonight well we're talking about injuries to pets we're talking about death do the cage dryers these are some serious issues and those are some serious risks if you have a cage dryer in your shop or if you're utilizing that practice we're going to talk about it and if you are you're in the right place. If you are using cage dryers, don't go anywhere because when you're cage drying, your hands aren't always on the dog. You're not always right here with the dog and you may not even be in front of the dog. He could be having a problem and you may not even know it because he's being cage dried. You may be doing something else. You may be trimming a dog's nails. You may be checking a client in, checking a client out. While this dog is in a cage drying, doesn't sound like a big deal, but it has proven to be a big deal. The purpose of this video tonight is to educate pet owners on the grooming methods that could cost your pet their lives, especially if you're not aware of it. Now, it's not just for pet owners. This video tonight is also for groomers. I'm a groomer. What can I offer groomers on this subject tonight? Well, this is it. I can offer you some profitable alternatives to trade in your cage dryers, a reason to trade in your cage dryer for a new business model that will allow you not to only generate more income, but will position groomers for state compliancy when licensing becomes implemented. And it will, guys. Licensing will be implemented state by state by state. It's going to happen. And the reason it's going to happen is because dogs are dying in grooming salons in cage dryers, mainly with cage dryer situations. So we really need to talk about it. We have a lot to talk about. So if you are a groomer and using cage dryers, don't go anywhere. We still love you. We're gonna change things. Stick around. As we look at this footage together today, keep an open mind. It is a little hard to watch. I want you to know that. I wanna pre-warn everybody, but it's real and it's a reality. And because we love our pets and we love each other and we love our groomers we need to talk about this we need to share we need to work some things out i have a lot of good info so what i want you to do is i want you to type in the chat right now i'm getting ready to throw the footage on if you take your pet to a groomer or if you are a pet groomer we all wish taking our pets to the groomer felt more like this but the truth is there are dangers in pet grooming and you should be aware of it i created this video for you today because I realize there are things that you are unaware of that may be going on with your pet in the grooming salon. Grooming a dog is not an easy task for the dog or for the groomer. If you choose a professional pet groomer that has safe business practices in place, there are a few things you can ask your groomer to ensure that your pet is safe. 
The first and most important question I want you to ask your groomer is do they use cage dryers? If they do, do not leave your dog there. I am going to go into great detail here with you guys today and share with you some pretty sad stories about pets and their owners because of cage drying. The second question I want you to ask, and it's very important, ask them how many dogs they groom typically in a day. If they tell you they groom more than five dogs a day, I want you to know your dog is definitely left unattended more than your dog would be attended. What I mean by that is if something is going wrong for your dog because he's in a back room in a cage with a dryer on him and nobody is with him at the time because the groomer's doing other things, it could be too late for your dog by the time it's realized that your dog is struggling with an issue. A Virginia family says their dog died because of a mistake made at a Petco store. I'm going to show you a picture of Sweet Colby. His family says that he was dropped off at a Petco in Chesterfield County in Virginia Friday for a routine grooming. But the owner, whose name is Allison Marks, says the store manager told her a groomer accidentally left Colby in one of the drying cages for too long. A vet says that Colby likely died of heat stroke. How could he not suffer? He was in a cage for God knows how long. 24 hours after Allison Mark shared her story about her dog Colby's death, we learned a Westchester Commons Petco groomer has been suspended while other dog owners are speaking out. Heather Bish says five years ago her corgi was burned while also getting groomed at a different Petco. His back, because he has such a thick coat you couldn't really tell, had been burned and it was like blistered. She said it appeared that he could have been left in the dryer too long. Petco says it is taking immediate action to investigate and understand this deadly situation. Virginia resident Allison Marks dropped off her two-year-old golden retriever at a Petco grooming center in Chesterfield County on Friday. Colby was only supposed to get a quick wash, but as the hours wore on, Allison started wondering why she hadn't gotten a call. Unfortunately, when the call did come, it was bad news. The Petco store manager informed Allison that her beloved dog had been left in a drying cage for too long and had overheated and died. The drying cages are supposed to switch off automatically after 15 minutes. But somehow, something went terribly wrong. A vet said Colby died of heat stroke. The store manager said Colby's groomer left early as she had to attend a graduation party, but it's unknown if human error or mechanical failure contributed to Colby's death. Steve Boshin owns Barking Lot Groomers. He says virtually every groomer uses fans or cage dryers in the Richmond area, and we confirm that. Did you hear that, guys? He said most groomers use cage dryers. You've got to dry the dogs off. Boshin says hand drying can be impractical and time consuming. And while cage drying is easier, Boshin says it requires more attention from groomers. It's got four different settings. Now, we don't know how hot that cage at Petco was last Friday, but we turned this one up to high for about 10 minutes. And the metal is already hot. You feel the air inside. It feels as if it's well over 100 degrees. It just blows air. Boshin says concerned pet owners should ask groomers to only use fans like this to blow air at room temperature or request hand dryers. As Colby's death spreads nationwide, one woman who lost her dog at a groomer's in New Jersey tells us through FaceTime she's working on changing laws. So that's why my bill will include outlawing heated cages. So that brings us to today's health watch risk that you might not have considered when taking your pet to the groomer. Dr. Eric Cryan with Nova Mobile Vet is here to share some of those dangers. Drying and cages are, are very common when most veterinary hospitals and board facilities. Work. They're very, very common, but there are safety features that you can use. You know, most of the drying cages that I've uh, been in are not caged in themselves, but units that you put on that have inherent safety features where you can set the temperature not put any heat on or most importantly just have a timer so they're not on continuously and so if someone leave they would go where you can set the temperature not put any heat on or most importantly just have a timer so they're not on continuously and so if someone leave they would go out so you can have a policy where you know you only set it for a few minutes um but you know definitely when you're taking your pet to a grooming place you know like all veterinary hospitals you want to be able to ask and see the facilities you know see who's you know taking care of your dog and what facilities they're using and what safety precautions they have you're absolutely right uh, i'll put myself in that category they take my dogs to a back room i've never even asked to go into the back room right but it's your loved one going back there. Although the water, they're going to be happy to show you, uh, you know, the facilities they have and the safety precautions they have in place. Let me ask you about heat stroke. Um, this is what Colby likely died of. 
the same sort of heat stroke that a dog or a, a, a child, for that matter, would suffer in a car. Very, very similar. It's the same sort of tragic thing where, you know, someone forgets and, and leaves a pet or a kid in a car in this time of the year. You know, it's very tragic when you hear about that. But basically in a similar situation where, you know, the, you know your body just can't compensate for the heat, you know, and it, with, a, you know, a constant dry or being left in a car where you can't compensate. And where the, it's like just being in an oven or a greenhouse where it just keeps getting hotter and hotter in there. It's like just being in an oven or a greenhouse where it just keeps getting hotter and hotter in there. What are the signs that you tell your clients to look for as far as a dog or a cat, for that matter, in distress because of heat? Uh, excellent question. You know, while the normal signs are mild things like panting, you know, you want to look for excessive, you know, lethargy. You know, you want to make sure a dog, when they're outside in heat like this, always has access to water and they have a pool place to recover. I don't know the time on Colby here, but how long would um, heat become a dangerous factor in a pet's life? Good question. Um, you know, there's going to be a variable factor, it's just like a person, you know, so it's going to be a function of heat and humidity. But when we have the heat advisories for people and they're saying stay indoors and watch your running, the same thing applies, you know, for, for the pets. And, and certainly, just like with people, the very old, the very young, they're going to be more susceptible to the extreme heat and, and cold. Climate. The latest dog to die, a corgi named Abby, died March 29th in Toms River, New Jersey, after being dropped off for routine grooming. Um, is being taken to Flemington Vet. Danielle DiNapoli says she got this call about her dog Scruffles during grooming at a Flemington, New Jersey Pet Smart last December. By the time she got there, the eight-year-old dog was dead. The Denapolis are filing a lawsuit claiming PetSmart violated policy by using a dryer on the English Bulldog, a breed known to be prone to breathing difficulty. So many dogs. Danielle says she was shocked by how many other owners have since reached out with their own allegations. I cannot count. There's so many. In a statement, PetSmart calls the incidents unrelated adding it's deeply saddened by the deaths, but pointing out its investigations revealed associates followed rigorous practices and that pet parents have refused to share their animals' autopsy reports, which could show pre-existing conditions. So let me just ask you guys, do you think this would be the best way for your dog to be handled, to be dried, to be groomed? It's dangerous and you just need to know it. Don't allow your dog to be in this situation. Please just ask the questions. Okay, guys. So that was a little hard to watch. Um, it does. This is not the situation in every grooming salon. It's it's typical in salons that groom a lot of dogs in a day. Even if they have bathers and grooming assistants, I don't have any cages in my salon at all because. I don't even crate dogs. I don't need to because I've tailored my business to a way that works for me, the pets, and the pet owners. And I will explain that to you. Stick around. We can get rid of crates. We can get rid of cage dryers. We can say bye-bye to that. People really want to know that their pets are taken care of and they're safe. And they are going to pay a, a price for that. Willingly, 95% of my clients are just people like you and me who struggle to pay our bills every month. We do the best we can, we get it done. But their dogs are important to them. That's why they bring them here. I'm a groomer. I'm not bashing groomers. Please don't mistake in this message, what I'm sharing with you guys today, as putting anybody on the hot seat. We're looking for solutions, and I have plenty. We're just working together here. This is not to put anybody in, in a bad way. Groomers work way too hard. I can tell you that. I am one. I've been there just like you guys all through the years. It's easy to abuse the fact that you cage dry and leave a dog in longer or take that extra potty break while the dog is in there or take that extra phone call because the dog's in the cage dryer. He's fine. He'll be fine in there. You know, you're not looking at the dog when he's in the cage dryer. You're doing other things. And, and that bulldog, bulldogs have a short breathing capacity as it is. My thing is this, there are a lot of things that we can implement in our day-to-day -day grooming and get away from that. A whole new model for operating your business that benefits you and the pets and the clients. I need to know if you guys that do take your dogs to a groomer, if you are aware that they were ever cage dried, or if you are unaware, say just type in not sure, if you're not sure if they were cage dried because you don't know the operations of the salon, or type in, yes, I know my dog was cage dried because they, they disclosed that to me, which they should disclose that to you. They should tell you the 
procedures for grooming your pet. Something like that. Yeah, they should tell you. This is why I'm asking you guys. Because you should be aware of that. And I'll tell you, there's many reasons why. One reason is because you may be aware of a health issue that your dog has that your groomer is not aware of. That putting it in, in a heated cage dryer could cause your dog to have a problem, possibly go into, you know, a heat stroke situation depending on their heart, their lungs, their breathing problems. I had a pug that the last year of his life, breathing was a major issue for him. If I had put him in a cage dryer, I may as well just go outside and dig his grave. He couldn't have handled it. But see, if the groomer doesn't know that, this is why it's important that, that the pet owners and the groomers really disclose everything. And I have pet owners that come in here that don't disclose nearly enough with me that they should, and I get kind of upset. The dogs, life is in my hands at times you know if if i'm doing something that could cause him problems but i don't know that he has this problem i'm being set up for failure i don't want anything to happen to any dog in this shop i don't want anything to happen to any dog in any shop people don't disclose to me that their dogs have epilepsy why wouldn't you tell me that you know stuff like that i mean we have to work together we have to we have to talk to each other we have to share raquel says i'm unaware if miles is cage dried going to ask good that's what i want you to do i want you to ask and i want you to tell them don't cage dry my dog and you know what they have four dryers. they have stand dryers they can get it done and groomers no worries i want to set everybody up for success we're going to work through this together this is a process this isn't going to be in one episode this is something that we're going to have to touch on frequently okay we're going to get there something that i want groomers to know too we can change things we can change your business model and it'll allow you to generate more income but it also is going to position you in a good spot for when licensing comes around state licensing and it, it's going to we all know it's just a matter of when and then you're already compliant with some things cage dryers are probably going to be outlawed so the sooner that we all jump on board with throwing them things in the scrap yard the better honestly and start implementing a new business model a new way to, to run our business and get paid what we need to be paid we work very hard if you are a groomer and and you do use cage dryers in your salon or if you work for another salon and they use cage dryers just say so let's talk about this don't be ashamed of it these procedures have been in place for decades this is nothing new it's normal but but now we're finding that it's a problem we're finding it's often a problem and sometimes it is because maybe a pet's older he can't take it or maybe he has an underlying issue that nobody's aware of because he can't tell us we're gonna work through it this is the deal we're gonna work together okay we're gonna work together starting tonight to change the future of pet grooming one that we can all be proud of as groomers and as pet owners because we're gonna work together as groomers and pet owners pet owners need groomers groomers need pet owners that means we must work together we are better together so let's get this show on the road let's do this okay groomers should shine in the spotlight when the spotlight's on them they should shine they should not crumble in defeat because of lazy unsafe practices that's giving groomers a scarlet letter it's not fair it's not fair we're better than that we deserve the credit for the work and the precautionary measures that we take to ensure pet safety we do we all do it's a tough job our job is not only physically taxing but it certainly is mentally taxing because we're responsible for not only providing quality compassionate pet grooming but the dogs that occupy our grooming tables are vulnerable during the grooming process groomers need a compliant dog they need a reasonable dog a dog they can reason with or the groom could prove to be a danger for the pet which means that groomers also need to have the ability to convince dogs into good behavior. And that's not always easy. This is a lot of work for a groomer, isn't it? We are. We are overworked. But we do it because we love it and we're passionate about it. But we need, we need to work together with our pet owners. We need to understand everything that we can about these pets that we are grooming on our grooming tables. And the owners need to understand everything that's going on with their pets on our grooming table it's a two-way street it absolutely is 
How do we put a price tag on providing grooming services? How do we charge and, and get it compensated for our work? Because it's a lot of work. It's not just playing with a dog. We're responsible for them. A hundred thousand things could go wrong in that hour and a half. And they do at times go wrong. Okay, and, and to say that a groomer is always prepared for those situations is not true. They're not. We're not. We can't always be. You have to experience it to be prepared for. You have to experience these situations to know what to do. Now, training helps. We have training. Even CPR training should be across the board for, for uh, groomers. Guess what, guys? I'm not CPR certified. I, I can admit it. I'm, I'm, it's true. I, I could be. I could have done it. Why didn't I do it? I don't know. I guess it's been on the list. I just never did it. I should be. Maybe with licensing, we would be CPR certified because it would be required of us. And that would be okay. Because if we saved a life, we could feel really good about that, guys. You know? So how do we put a price tag on providing the services that groomers, groomers provide for pets? In my opinion, we're not paid nearly enough for the things that we do <clears throat> that add up to a successful grooming experience for the client, for the pet client. Okay, so however, people need to be able to afford grooming too. So it's like, Arr. they gotta be able to afford it. But man, I'm telling you, we're doing the job of like six people. One groomer, one groom. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. That's why we do it. But we can't be on the hot seat all the time whenever things go wrong you know we can't all be thrown into a bubble or a box and categorized the same because we're not all the same we, we don't all have that we don't all share the same practices but if there was something in place with licensing in our states we would have to comply and it would be investigated that we're in compliance to you know using the proper equipment the proper sanitation issues on um, our are keeping up with our medical records on our client dogs all those things are things that we get lazy about because groomers do the job of six people they honestly do sometimes you let things slip through the cracks so you're like oh geez i don't have time now my, I'm, I'm backed up in my schedule and i actually have to get the work done you know not only all the other work the paperwork the phone calls the, you know i have to get the work done i'm the groomer too so let's break it down what's it like when dog comes into the grooming shop what happens? Well, it starts out with a full brush out initially. The dog gets up on the table. The groomer br thoroughly brushes the dog out so it can, so the groomer can give the dog a thorough bath, clean the skin really well. We can't leave a bunch of mats and stuff in the coat unless they're impossible to get out. They need to be shaved out. But we have to get the dog prepped for um, to get their skin clean, their coat clean in the tub. So first thing they get is a full brush out, full body. When we go to the hair salon, we get our hair brushed. We're doing a full body on a dog. And then we pluck and we clean the ears. We trim the nails. We remove buildup from the eyes, the mouth, the anus. It all comes in with buildup. That's okay. That's what groomers do. That's what we do. We're okay with it. So, <laughs> moving on. We thoroughly bathe and condition the pet. After we do that, we get them back out on the table. We give them a fluff dry. We give them a force dry. Another full brush out. That's two full brush outs now. This is one groom. And then we give the dog a full body haircut. Full body, not just a head, the whole body and the head. In doing so, in giving them a full haircut, we also are including industry standard finishing techniques that only a skilled professional groomer can provide. So we have a skill, man. We do. It's major. It's a big skill. It's a good skill. And it's not something that you can learn in a book. You learn it from experience. And you learn it from somebody else who is experienced. Okay? We also clean up pee and poo. That we do a lot. It just happens. It's okay. Poop happens. I think that groomers should break down their pricing to accommodate an hourly wage set it up like that depending on your operating cost everybody has different operating costs whether you rent a salon or you own a salon it's in your house or or if you have a mobile grooming unit or whatever i break it down into an hourly cost so typically a small dog most of my dogs are small like shih tzu size shih tzu schnauzer um yorkies 
mix a lot of little mixed breed stuff like that i do still have some big dogs that i groom i don't take big dogs anymore so the ones i have i take care of though i do love them it's just i'm getting old <laughs> it hurts so me. a small dog like a shih tzu i break that down into about 30 dollars an hour is what i make as a groomer you know yeah i charge about 45 dollars for a shih tzu but like i said it's this is what the shih tzu gets it's, I think we're sold short sometimes. I know a lot of, I know a lot of clients fully understand the work and they are so grateful. All my clients seem to be very grateful and I'm very grateful for them. They really are grateful. Uh, they know it's a lot of work, but I do one-on-one -on -one grooming. So I basically book an hour and a half um, to two hours per small dog. And that occasionally, you know, clients will have two dogs and they'll come in together and that's just fine that's no problem now i used to have help i used to have a helper i had several helpers and it were it went very well but i tell you it just adds more stress there's more dogs coming in there's more movement throughout the shop there's more activity for the to distract you and to distract your dogs i really so i restructured my whole business in 2016 guys in 2016 I restructured my business model I had a helper for years she was wonderful she did a great job I a car helper I should say she was my grooming assistant she did a lot of the pre-trimming she fully capable of the baths the blowouts the brush outs the dematting she did a fabulous job she helped me with scheduling answering calls in 2016 my helper that I'd had for four or five years we'd been together for a while she was wonderful and she was um, kind of doing another business adventure with her husband and he needed her help hi Angela it's okay you can catch up honey and uh, so she was gonna she was gonna really back down in her hours but she she'd only worked like two days a week I, I still worked alone several days by myself but my schedule was demanding I, I had to keep more dogs happy you know and, and I needed help so it, it worked out when she was leaving I decided to take a look at everything and I hadn't raised my prices in a long time and I knew that I needed to I mean the cost of my shampoos were going up obviously my electric bill was was up. electric is expensive very expensive and it didn't used to be what it is now it's very expensive so you know my, my operating expenses had gone up so I needed to change some things I needed to restructure some things also we had put some money into the business we had to do stuff with the septic system which cost us a lot of money in order to keep the business here i'm going to go over this in more detail for you guys next week for um, groomers especially that are interested in this but you'll all find it interesting because no matter what business you're in or what business venture you're interested in you can always learn something from somebody that is offering their business experience what they have experienced you can always take something from that long story short i'm going to go in more detail next week all my clients had to reschedule at the time of checkout or i could not guarantee them a spot and i would not guarantee them a spot um, this ensured that the dog didn't come in overgrown or with an abundance of coat and mats and it also ensured the cost of the groom would remain the same for for the owner so they they knew what to expect if they didn't comply within that six to eight week schedule whichever whatever type of breed it was it would be between six to eight weeks usually i would say you have to reschedule here anyway this went over well this was well received i wrote a letter i will read my letter that i that i made to all my customers and i gave it to them about four months before i implemented uh, there were several other important elements that i added and subtracted out of my current business practices um, obviously next week we're going to go over all that together guys it's very interesting and it was very beneficial to the pets and to the owners as well as it was beneficial to me and this included a complete across the board large increase in my profits I want businesses to succeed I want pet owners to succeed I want everybody to get what they need out of grooming I think it. that pet owners should be aware of that if my Gus was going to a groomer I would want to know if he's being cage dried because like I said Gus may have a problem a health problem that I may think is kind of insignificant don't really need to bring it up to the groomer but it could be a factor if he's in a cage drying situation
We need to talk to each other, groomers and pet owners. It's very important. I want everybody to um, to be able to understand that that um, they they should know. They should be told. They shouldn't already have to ask. They should be told that, that you know we use cage dryers because of what I said about the underlying health issues. Could be a little breathing problem that your dog has that you may think is not that big of a deal because you're not thinking he's going to be stuck in a you know in a like a little greenhouse kind of can be now there's settings on those dryers now i i don't want to make it sound like this is what i'm worried about people get comfortable using certain equipment and when they're comfortable they tend to push limits and that's when bad things happen oh he can be in there another 10 minutes he'll be fine that other shih tzu last week was great he did he was fine he was fine this one will be fine guess what he may not be fine you may go in there to get him and he may not be alive who wants that? Nobody does. We should just get rid of them. So this is the deal. You can get rid of them. We have wonderful force dryers that are not using heated elements. They do a great job. They blow the coat out. They blow out dead coat, you know, shedded coat. They, And we have stand dryers where we can fluff the ears and the top knots and whatever parts we want to fluff and use heat, but we're still in control of that. See, that's a stand dryer right there behind me. And that's what I use to fluff ears top knots tails anything pretty like that that i want to that i want to fluff when i was getting into grooming i was never attracted to the cage dryers in fact when i first saw them and i would go to you know like the expos and the the big the big grooming shows where you can buy products and equipment and whatever i'd see these things and i'd go why would anybody use that that just just that that looks a little bit scary to me that looks scary. If I was a dog, I would be frightened of that, you know. I mean, dogs are already frightened. Don't forget, often when they're here at the grooming shop, they're away from home. They don't like that. Mom left. They don't like that. Dad left. They hate that. Um, they're on a grooming table. Some dogs have an issue being elevated. They're scared. That scares them. Some dogs don't like water. So they're upset. And you just, I just think to add a cage dryer on top of all that stress is is silliness and I, I can't even believe that they make them i really can't and i do want to do this i just don't know how because i don't know of anybody that uses any i want to i have a gopro camera and i would like to um maybe put gus in a cage dryer with the gopro on so we can see what cage drying is like from his perspective of course i wouldn't allow any heat to be on it would just be the noise not the heat I would not do any heat, would never do it. Not gonna do it, not my guess. So, but I would like to put him in a situation so we can see what it looks like. Have the, the GoPro on him mounted. I can mount it to his collar, I can mount it to him and have him in a cage dryer. And, and cause if he's panting and stuff, we're gonna see that movement. We're gonna see how he's feeling. We're gonna hear him whining and panting. And, and we're gonna say this, so this is what it's like to be cage dried. No, no thanks. But I want to do that. So I will find some place that cage dries and hopefully they will allow me to do this experiment. I might have to beg, plead, and pay money, but I'll do it. I promise. He's a pretty good sport. I think he would do this for the benefit of all your pets. And here's the thing that I wanted to share with everybody that, you know, groomers, the force dryers do a better job, a faster job, and they don't upset the dogs as much as using a cage drying technique. And here's the, the other benefit. When you're force drying a dog, you're with the dog. That's a huge benefit. When you're cage drying a dog, you're not with them. They're in a cage. And if they're struggling or having problems, you may be on a phone call or you may be clipping nails or you may be doing a brush out. You may be bathing the dog. You don't know the dog is in there and cannot breathe. And equipment malfunctions. Don't forget that. Equipment malfunctions. Okay, so you set it to, to low. Maybe it goes to high heat. It's possible. It's possible. So, that's why we don't use them. We don't ever want to use them. So, Actually, okay, guys. I think we're all on the same page. Anybody that takes their dog to a, a groomer, which groomers are fabulous. Remember, we love our groomers absolutely love our groomers anybody that takes them there should ask because it's not always standard procedure for them to share with you if they're force drying your dog and why is it important to ask 
because you may know of a small little issue that your dog may have that that maybe you wouldn't think would be a problem if they were in a force drying situ or a cage drying situation but it could be a problem but you you just don't realize what goes on with the dog at the groomer to say oh yeah i should probably tell them that you know if, if i made you mad then i must have went about this the wrong way because i'm not i'm not here to put anybody on the hot seat i'm not here to make anybody feel bad we just need to make some changes and like i said next week we're going to share some really awesome things hey look i want to show you something else guys i i i took a little bit of footage this was today earlier i was working on a dog and i and i i was working on her and i had to go potty but when we have a dog on the table and we work alone you can't walk away from them you can never leave a dog unattended on a grooming table there's been many deaths attributed to that too we can talk about that in another episode or maybe we just won't because it's not very pleasant so i was like i need to show my my people what that there's simple solutions if we got to go potty i have a hook in the wall right here i'm going to show you here let me put this little video on okay guys here it is so i had to go so i'm like okay she's on the table well, i'll just take her off i hook her right over here so she's not running around because dogs get crazy They're like oh free free i'm free and they run all around and then you know she's hooked she's safe i can go potty perfect right it is a pain it really is when we have to go potty or we need to get some water because we're thirsty and we got a dog on the table it's like i can't walk away from them don't walk away from them put them down hook them to a wall then go do what you gotta do if your dog is ticking you off because they can do that they have the power take the dog put him on a hook on the wall still on the grooming lead and walk away from him for a few minutes you'll feel much better i get frustrated too they really know how to send you to to level 11. they do and some of them are just wonderful they're all wonderful but they, hey, they have a mind of their own another thing when it comes to you know tailoring your business you want to let your clients know what you expect of them and they need to let you know what they expect of you they have to trust you you have to trust them you see your client dog for the next groom you know and they don't want to rebook you don't have to tolerate the putting it off and the client you know bringing you a dog that's mad and stuff you tell them that you don't run your business that way they have to rebook you say oh that's a cocker spaniel I don't want to see this dog any less than eight weeks from now or he's just going to be a handful and it's going to mess up my whole schedule and it's going to be too much work for him it's going to be too much work for me and if they weren't compliant then you said there's probably not going to be a spot on my schedule for you that's it you're the professional you know what's best they have to they have to work with you too some people just think it's okay to put off dog grooming for six months or a year even i've seen it I don't even do dogs like that anymore because everybody that comes in now i told you i revamped my business and i did and i'm going to share that with you next week it's completely structured to benefit the groomer the dog and the pet owner and it works Does anybody have any input or any questions or anything to say about what we've what we've talked about here today? Did I leave anything confused, unsettled? Um, did I did I not did I not explain anything that that somebody needs a little more explaining? Because I'll be glad to explain. I honestly will. I look forward to talking to you next week. Get your thoughts together too. We can all feed off of each other and add a lot of, of good value to, to a pretty rough subject. So let's make, let's make it, let's turn things around. I love you guys and I really appreciate your support and I really appreciate us getting together every Monday. It means the world to me. You don't want to miss next week and the next week and the next week and the next week. Don't ever miss. Ever, never. <laughs> all right, guys, take care. I will see you next Monday. Let's just throw down that subscriber showdown one more time.
All right, you have a good week, okay? All right. Love you guys.